food just grown here, wild on the roadside. And the idea is to get it before the birds do. Banana passion fruit. Most of them look pretty green, but that one there's. Oh. Just can't reach it. If I pull this vine down, it might come down more. Well, there we go, that's better. Beautiful. All well, the animals have had a good feast on them. That one's been uh, picked by the birds. Guy's yellow enough. Ah, bonus, one down low. And the ones off the ground are generally the ripest. Yeah, it's really got that dark canary yellow, isn't it? Very yellow. The canopy makes a a good roof to sleep under of the passion fruit. And earlier on this year when I did my primitive challenge on the beach, I slept three days under just that, a canopy of yeah, passion fruit uh, vines and it made a, a good bed underneath it because it uh, kept the dew off at night and I also was able to pick some passion fruit in the morning. These, these fruit are abundant all year round and they're considered to be, the plant's considered to be a noxious uh, plant and I find nothing obnoxious about all because you can see here quite well it's cohabitating with other trees, the other trees are fine, it hasn't killed anything and there's a lot of native bush all around me and doesn't seem to be killing anything. The bracken's still okay and these plants are doing right so I don't know, I don't uh, worry too much about it growing my own property, in fact I've just transplanted one on my property so I can get passion fruit without having to wander too far from home so in a couple of years. I actually like these just as much as the black passion fruit, a very sweet, whoops, very sweet Nice, tangy taste, delicious. Underneath the canopy, all these little ferns growing. Look, new growth. It's almost like springtime's come early this year in New Zealand. Look at these guys all growing. And of course, blackberry. Nothing wrong with a feed of blackberries either. Get these little guava berries before the birds get them, because it doesn't take long. Everybody's hungry in winter. These are just delicious. I've got yellow ones growing too. You can see why you've got to beat the birds. Because they don't even eat the whole berry. They'll pick some and just leave the rest in the ground like that. Or they'll just uh, feed on them on the tree like this one here and not finish it off. They're not the most uh, economical feeders. They just take what they want and then fly off. There's quite a few varieties of these and I've got some that are actually even bigger. No shortage of these guys growing in the winter either. Looks like it's got a bit frosted. We'll leave those get a bit bigger. Mixture of wild and mixture of homegrown. Might go and have a look for some fungies down the native bush at the back of the house. Look at these beauties outside the old farmhouse. And when I say old farmhouse, you can see how old she is. Uh, like this is all going to be replaced. This is completely. I think it's, it's <laughs> it speaks for itself really. The windows have rotted and eventually we're going to rebuild this. All this weatherboard's rotten too. In fact the whole wall's going to go. But over here on the other side you can see uh, the mate he's done like for like and he's just replaced it and put a cavity in behind the uh, parallel zinc loom and there's our gas on the wall. Anyway, I'm heading down the back of the section. I was down here yesterday. Back past my daughter Dayla's uh, house in the trees, or tree house, I guess you'd call it. Tree house, tree hut, it's not really a house. She'll be staying in that soon when she comes back from Canada. There's still a lot of this black pipe on the ground because the whole place used to be irrigated. You can see these pipes running around. Once upon a time, it was like a, a flower place with stuff growing, and I've put these mussel boys down here, and eventually I'm gonna stagger them down. I'm gonna grow wasabi down here and watercress underneath the canopy of the forest. When I bought the old farmhouse, the land was what I was buying, but this bit of land here beside me wasn't part of it. There was a line going right down the middle of this native bush here, right up to the old shed, which is bulldozed material really. And the, the boundary went right through here, and I said to my neighbour Murray, who was buying it off, he's my landlord at the time, I really want to have this bit of native bush. So I, fact, I sacrificed some of the front of the section, which was north facing, which is valuable land, 
in order to keep this and they they did a boundary change for me which was really awesome and it meant that I got to keep this and I kept it because simply it's native bush and I love native bush and I want to have some native bush at the back of the house and I'm so pleased I did because you just can't grow stuff like this and I'm planting I've planted 40 kanukas in here anyway this log is what I've come down to look at what I want to do is I want to harvest this jelly ear or you also will know it as wood ear off these um this log here I want to harvest this while it's still intact we'll leave that small one on it might grow and keep going there's another one here and these are really really uh, got such good nutritional value that one might be a bit past or on the edge I think mm, should be right that one's past it's used by a date I think I think we can say that one there we got that too late hmm yeah she's a bit too waterlogged this is all good take that off gonna have this for lunch today Is it good? That's fine. That one's good. Oh, on the edge, I'll take it. These guys here are still fine. Hanging on for dear life. But chewed. This is such a good score. Really. Look at the size of this one. It's like a big elephant's ear. Look at that. Holy shit, look at that one there. It really does look like an ear, doesn't it? So what's in these guys that makes them so good? Pantothenic acid, riboflavin, copper, selenium, a massive ORAC value, that's your antioxidant, like it's massive. Uh, not as high as something like um, Indian gooseberry, Alma, which is probably the highest in the world, but they're, they're up there. And for heart disease, or fighting cancer right up there. Chinese use it in their soups and stuff and today I'm gonna to make a soup with this. It's got a nice chewy texture, you can eat it just like that or you can cook it. Um, some of these are past the use by date, some are on the edge but I've gathered quite a bit, you can see in here. Whoops, and uh, stay in there. And uh, gonna take it back up to the house and make a feed. This is uh, what I love is, is getting stuff from the forest because there's just nothing quite like it, it's organic and this native little ecosystem of plants I've got going here all around is supporting stuff like this and I'd like to see more of it. I could probably plant wasabi around these rotten logs because wasabi grows very well around uh, rotten logs. Look at these beauties growing wild and uh, I'm just going to take, take you mate, sorry, but um, you can go into my kitchen and uh, on my bench. What are these? Are these daffodils, everybody? I don't know what they are. They're wild in the garden. Take a couple of those. Beautiful, aren't they? Just beautiful. Look at that. They smell divine. I don't know much about flowers and stuff. All I know is I like the smell of them. And I know how they look. You guys are not there. I think they're daffodils, but I don't know. It doesn't really matter. They're growing wild here under this birch tree. I'm hanging out under the birch tree because I'm trying to find some birch bullet. Mushrooms, because they hang around birch trees, that's where they grow, but there's none here. I thought with the warm ground temperature, there might be some mushrooms popping up, but nothing here. I can smell that all day. On the whole, uh, life's pretty challenging. And uh, I've had quite a lot of challenges this year. This has been the most challenging year of my life. And so little things like this and some, uh, some mushrooms, I suppose you can call them that, or fungus. But they just give me a little bit of happiness in a day. And uh, I think that's what we all got to do is just do little things that make us happy and forget about trying to you know, aim too high and get all the big stuff because that can just make you work hard and get buggered. Going around and a little bit of forest and today I've been like collecting stuff on my land and off my land on the side of the road. It's a really nice feeling of achievement. You're bringing something back that's going to uh, give you nutrition but also something for the soul like this. I don't really like picking flowers, I'd rather see them grow, but I want to bring this back to the kitchen so I've got something there bright on my bench. I'm looking along here at uh, all this this rotten uh, dead wood, hoping to find some mushrooms come up, but nothing has. Uh, there's lots of rotten logs, so I'm just looking for anything growing, but there's nothing there. I've been pretty lucky to find that wood here, and I can keep this in the fridge for quite a while, cool. 
and I reckon there'll be some mushrooms coming up soon once uh, this uh, weather warms up a little bit more because it's so wet underground and all the mycelium that's got all the, the building blocks to growing really nice delicious mushrooms is in the ground already it just needs the right temperature to pop its head up but so far nothing down here but a nice walk down the drive looking for uh, tucker in the bush about three or four years ago I planted these carnukas now this one here is uh, doing well look at that there he's growing right up to here and it makes a nice tea uh, carnuka beautiful beautiful plant a bit like manuka and uh, what they end up looking like is these ones up here these great big ones that are towering over our head those are carnuka uh, great for firewood they burn really well too so I planted about 40 of them uh, all around the section I planted them there I planted them out uh, the front and all around the outside and uh, they're just about all of them have grown the hares and rabbits particularly the hares have uh, taken their teeth to some of them here's one here which hasn't done particularly well it's still growing uh, and what happens is the hares bite the tops off that one looks like his top's actually gone rotten but he's uh he's still there just not there it's died off i'm just imagining things that are going to go really well in my soup and i'm thinking sort of onion let's put some spring onions in there super ducks firing up these darker leaves we're going to have to wash those because the sparrows have been pulling on them to strip them out there and they've been eating them as you can see some of that on there hmm yeah why not have a bit of cabbage oh yeah take that there a couple of leaves stick that in the basket this is normally a footpath through here Nelson is under water in a lot of places we're not so bad here past the wasabi I'm gonna have a coffee later and plant out those tomatoes well there's not much sun today but enough to circulate the water and make sure each plant gets some of this uh, nutritional water and I say nutritional because it's got worm juice in it uh, seaweed it's pretty much a liquid fertilizer coffee grounds what I want to get is some wasabi and you can see in here the wasabi is actually starting to flower that's how it looks wasabi flower beautiful little white flowers and these guys are just growing so well and what is in here if you look down you'll see eggs you may go what are you wasting your eggs for clay well, that one hasn't broken down yet some in the ground but they do and of course wasabi loves sulfur and you get that from the eggs and whilst I love duck eggs I like actually what they produce and that's sulfur for my plants and we take these leaves the most valuable part of the plants considered to be the rising and by making the rising bigger you pick these leaves off the bottom and what that does is it increases the size of it but for me actually the valuable part of the plant is these guys here well it's both valuable because we get this beautiful leaf it's got a nice peppery flavor a little bit like rocket a little bit like horseradish uh, but really high again in nutritional value and high in antioxidant uh, dentists use it too for some stuff apparently good for your teeth I'll put that in for my soup wasabi likes to be under shade so in the winter this oak tree above the wasabi it doesn't have many leaves on it but when it's summertime it's full of leaves and it creates a shade area so all year round these guys get a protection these hot little chilies uh, it's actually dead the plant but we can use those it's come to a bit of a grinding halt putting the nets up I've got some more work to do, some more structural work. My wires haven't worked. I've got to put uh, cross members with T-bars in through. But right now I want to find something to add to my soup. So one of you told me that these here, we thought they were some sort of turnip, but they're not. They're actually an Asian uh, cabbage. And that's what I want. And I've just broken this leaf off the top of it. It's got, it's got caught in there. And that's actually going into my soup as well. I've discovered you can eat those in fact you can eat a lot of this so I'm going to take that off and pick these because these are delicious you can eat the whole stalk and uh, I want to not take too many leaves because I don't want to kill the plant I want it so it can still photosynthesize but these leaves are delicious I described the, the stalks tasting similar to asparagus a little bit well that's tough it's a good handful of leaves give those a good wash and under here to keep it away from the birds we've got this pak choy another super plant 
So Pak Choi is right up there with the NO, that's your nitric oxide production. That's what causes the uh, vasal dilation, so your veins, like they work properly. Your veins and your arteries keeps them all open up. And I have to grow this under these nets, otherwise the birds, man, it's a tough wee plant. I should have probably do those with a, a knife next time. It's the first time I've harvested. These guys are very tough. Yeah, definitely a knife next time. It'd be better, but anyway, we got them. I won't say I'm in love with kale. I eat it because it's got a lot of... Uh, good stuff in it it's I think one of one of the highest um, as far as green leafy vegetables go for uh, producing you know or nitric oxide as I said so that's why I have it but I can think of more tastier plants although chips made out of cows not bad these broccolis are just about ready to harvest lucky we've got nets around the plant in it eh or over these guys otherwise you'd be into those like flun the silver beet doesn't really like being underneath this stuff. I mean, I've got it ready to protect it from everything outside, but uh, it doesn't grow that well. I'll pick a couple of leaves of that. Also known in America as Swiss chard. So a silver beet, make sure you eat your whole white stalk, the whole white right to the end, because that's where the actual goodness is, just as much as the green. These cabbages are on their way now. They got hammered a bit by the slugs and the caterpillars. But the, the only way, we're going to get some little cabbages out of those, they'll be alright. And these beans are not doing particularly good under that uh, plastic, although they're growing faster. But these ones look more healthy. I'm really looking forward to getting that plastic off them, as soon as I get this net up. Smash his sister reared and bought me these two weeks ago, and they're still going strong. And I reckon um, these guys can go on there with them, keep them going a bit longer. Can someone tell me? Now, these are, these are daffodils here. These these. Uh, these are different, aren't they? Just Maybe they're just bigger daffodils, I don't know, but they look beautiful. I'm going to wash everything I've bought and start making a soup. Old super duck's playing with my bootlaces outside the door. No, I can see you, mate. It's not a worm, it's my bootlaces. Don't bloody try and swallow that, you know all about it. And she's managed to shit everywhere on this, oh, all over the bloody veranda. I need to just clean that. I don't wash my vegetables too much because a little bit of, little bit of dirt doesn't do you any harm. And uh, occasionally we get a bit of extra protein with the old slug. I'm going to cut these. Sort of like noodles, really. Because you can eat these raw, I'm only going to heat them. I'm not going to cook them too much at all because I don't want to take any of the. Uh, Nutritional value out of them. Nice. They have a real sort of a rubbery feel to them. Kind of like a, a bit like a noodle already that's been cooked, I guess you could describe it as the texture. They look like rubber bands, don't they? But they, uh, they'll snap. You can't stretch them like a rubber band. See, they snap. But these are the last of my little red chilies. And I've got to thank Hayley Langford for the plant. Hayley, I got three years out of that plant. She gave me capsicums and chilli. And I'm throffing at the mouth just because I know how sweet and spicy these are. They're quite hot. And they're my very last ones. So I need to put some more chilli plants in. There we go. Give that a nice chop up. There is actually a lot of nutritional value in the stalks of kale, but... It's just too much fibre for me, to be honest, so I don't take that, I strip it. I'm not going to be flash here. I'm just going to get it all. All our Asian cabbage and our wasabi and everything, and we're just going to go like this. Three quarters of a cup of water. Smack the heat on. Smash your veggies in. Done. Roll wrong top. Lid on top. I've got somebody out there watching my every move while I'm cooking in the kitchen. Here's our chilli with some sticky uh, spring onion juice stuck to them. Let's add a couple of minutes. Turmeric. Smoked paprika. Mmm. Cumin seed, I love cumin seed, ground cumin seed that is. I've actually got a grinder so I can grind my own seeds. 
although that isn't. And I'm actually going to add some more chilli because I want this to be quite hot. I'll put some in, but I want to have a real hot one this time. It's going to be bloody hot. Mmm. And uh, a little bit of ground ginger. Now, fresh ginger would have been better. I don't have any, so it's a good substitute. On top of that, the main star of the attraction, the woody. Ooh, -hoo -hoo. look at that. Looks bloody good, doesn't it? Not much, just a tiny little bit of soy. Not too much at all. My mouth is actually watering. We've reduced that water down quite a bit. So she's a uh, pretty hearty looking soup, isn't it? As you know, greens break down quite a lot too, but that is going to be delicious. Uh, the truth will be in the, uh, the trying of it. I'm just going to smash it straight into this big bowl here, just like that. How easy is that? Oh yeah. I couldn't really decide on a fork or a spoon, so I went for both. Uh, thanks to the flowers, Rhiannon, mixed with my ones, and also Rhiannon gave me that too. Smash this, this is a bloody legion. Uh, oh man, I went, pretty, I went pretty hard out on the spices, didn't I? I'll try what it is. <laughs> Tastes so Asian. It's like something you'd have, it's definitely in an Asian restaurant. Oh well, <laughs> oh well. <laughs> that's that's hot. Woo! Oh, that's good. Oh man, that's delicious. Oh, oh, that is absolutely. Mmm. Oh, I like the like the texture. Mmm. Oh, my nose is gonna run. Um. Mmm. Oh, my nose is running. It's my first time making this, so if you wanted to make it not so crunchy, then you'd cook it a bit longer. And it'd be softer, I think. I think that's what happens. Mmm, this is del delicious. I can't decide on a spoon or fork. Need both, really. Oh, that's a winner. Everything here, hits off the table there, Clay. Everything here, out of the garden. Or out of the bush. It's uh, my goal is to eventually to be completely self-sufficient as far as food goes. I don't know if I ever achieve it because I love coffee too much, and uh, Chloe sends me coffee from Australia. But so even if there's another lockdown, I can get everything from this this place here and live. Oh, so this is what I would class as a very high nutritional meal. Like the nutrition in this, the value would be so high. And these days, all I'm putting into my body is, is stuff that's got a nutritional value that can help fight disease, because God knows I had my share of disease. Mm. Oh. <sighs> I love finding something new. It's like, wow, that is so good. Um, I'm going to smash this down. Go and make a coffee out in the garden, do some uh, potting, and then I'm going to carry on with my frame. My mate Simon just rocked up and he said that uh, he was at this hop growing place and they were measuring the temperature of the ground and it was 5% hotter than it normally is at this time of the year. Oh, smell of coffee. Thank you, Chloe, for the coffee. Damo and I are still enjoying it. So I'm out here uh, doing a bit of gardening and um, just taking a break, doing some potting up. Got some early season tomatoes to put in. So these guys look like they need a bit of water. A bit sad on, aren't they? Uh, these are uh, Dynamo, these ones here. And the other ones are acid-free tomato. Uh, and these ones here, what well, they're called, Roma. They're an acid-free tomato. And the other ones are money makers. Which are really they're good ones. They they uh, they don't make any money, but they make you uh, a load of tomatoes. I find that if I put water on them first, they come out of the boxes easier. 
get them really get them really soaked and then I can take them out uh, they don't break so much everything else doesn't need a water but these guys do we will give this guy a bit of water too it's beautiful have you guys seen that orange flower before uh, bought that today I'd never seen it before and it was it was reasonably priced uh, it's called Calancho Calancho K A L a N C H O E Calancho and yeah, it's beautiful a nice cadmium orange look at that it's a beautiful beautiful flower on it really nice it's like wow no smell to it but uh, beautiful flower so another one to add to my uh, things to spark my joint it's got a few dead ones which just snap them off what I do now with everything, if something's dead on a plant, I take it off just in case it's a disease. Or if there's a leaf like this, I just pinch them off because you don't know. It might have a disease and you might be you know, getting rid of it, like chopping off dead cancer. You don't need it stay there to keep growing. I don't know why these leaves go black at the end, whether it's frost does, does it or what it is, but it doesn't look flash. This has been knocked so that can come off. That's a much bigger pot. I'll do well on that. Plants should not only be to feed the belly but also feed the soul. That's my motto. Nice, it's a it's a nice one, isn't it? Beautiful. Oh we've still got some left. Yep, making a right old mess of my footpath, aren't you, mate? Yep. I love battery-operated power tools. They're simply the best. Make sure you cut on the right side of the line, Clay. Nice. Oh, Poe's found the bloody pigskin from the pig I got with the boys three weeks ago it's been out uh, and the weather and the rain softened up now she can chew on it oh, I'll let her chew on it, I don't care I ordered these links uh, a little bit too short not that short but uh, short enough that I needed to put some uh, joiners in these screws are only 30s and it's 25 so I'm having to screw these home and past home to make sure that she uh, stays together yeah rough enough I bought these brackets today and tight I really get an appreciation for blokes that are builders like my mate Harv that all day drilling. You don't realise when you do these little jobs yourself how much strength it requires. It's a, you can see why they would never have to go to the gym. It's a workout all day doing these little jobs. Anyway, we've got our uh, first beam up. We need to put a T-bar to support it. It was really necessary to put these up. It just wasn't going to be enough with a bit of wire. And she's on the other side, I've done that end. They call either wire chars or standards. They should be called bastards, because when you get them on the ground they're a bastard to get out. Patron, one of my patrons, Colin Price, said to me you could use a uh, a jack. A trolley jack. Well I haven't got a trolley jack handy. I've got this bit of rusty old dog chain. And I don't know how the hell I'm going to do this, if it's even possible, but... Uh, Got the old four inch nail this time. Let's see if it's going to hold it because the last one snapped. Shows you how much pressure it is. Oh. Another nail's going to bend, I think. Oh, 
which is going to go. That mouth is stuck in a hole. Going to bend it. Bagger it. Right, we're not sure how we're doing the shit. We got a uh, a dog collar. Hey, Poe, your dog collar. No, I'm not putting it on you, mate. I'm going to try and uh, see if we can work out a way. You know, I want, want to get in here without you in my face. I'm going to poke that through. Yeah, here you like. No, no, I'm trying to do this job. But you and bloody Super Duck. Yeah, it makes it. You. You stink of. You've been eating shit or something. You stink. She's been eating shit. How about you get off me, eh? Because I can't do this with you. I can't do this with you on me. And then put this through here. Oh, Poe, you're making it impossible, mate. Just impossible to work with you. Would you piss off, Poe? Honestly, piss off, mate. I'm gonna put this here. I don't even know what that is. You know what one of those is? Oh, mate. I'm gonna put that through there. Make a loop. Like that. Actually, what I'll do is I'll put that on the other side. Like this here. Poe, piss off. Get out of there, Poe. Uh, is... Hey, get off me, you bastard! Bloody duck! Fucking hell. Right, you're yeah, a lot easier. Right, we're going to use that to finish up our T-support. Rough enough. Take a time. Take a time. A bit creamy. There you go, mate. Always give the neighbour sheep a few. Just so she didn't feel left out. The lonely sheep on the mountain. She won't come down to me. I don't know why. She's got two lambs inside her. Hey, lamby poo. You want some? Try that. Don't be scared of it, mate. You can eat that. It's a good tucker. She's gone over to her mum now. Maybe she's going to try some on the ground. The rams aren't very shearing. They should be. It's their daughter. Okay, there you go. You want some? This guy's normally can't get close to. There you go. Try that. Yeah, it's pretty close, eh? Try some. Don't take my finger. You have the nut. There you go. There you're talking. There you go. See, it's not bad, is it? Really? That's a first for him. The lamb's getting fat very quickly. Oh, the chalet's come over to see what's going down, eh? Oh, she's getting fatter every day. Can't be too far away. We have some lambs in the paddock from her. Well, the lamb's picked up a nut there. That's a first. See, a lamb's just got a nut in its mouth now. So with his mum there. Mum's teaching how to eat sheep nuts. Is he going to eat it or not? That's a first. Sniffing them, but not sure about them. It's good if she gets the hang of them, because I'd like to be able to get her close so I can drench her. And I need something to lure her in, so I don't have a handy dog. You can eat those, mate. You can eat those. It's not 1080, it's uh, sheep nuts. Oh, there's the rest of them. Oh, you bastard. Smacked him in the head. That must have hurt, eh? Glad my hand wasn't in between those two. No? Eh? Come on, shearing's caring. That must have bloody hurt. The vibration of the ground just about bloody knocked me over. Damo's just walking very slow down the paddock. I think he's a wee bit under the weather. Haven't seen him much the last couple of three days. He's been pretty tired, I think. 
Oh, he's coming up. Anyway, so it's me walking them today. That's another way to get a wire tower out of the ground. Put a ram on it. That thing's been there for about a year, that wire tower. I reckon just about pull out now. The Mountie's scratched his neck on it. He's very good with the dogs, Damo. Particularly good with Bigsy. Bigsy's not an easy dog, but uh, he listens to Damo. See Damo holding his back. Got a bit of pain in it. He's a good bastard. Well, time to go and make some grub. Sun's going down on Mount Arthur. Still a bit of snow there, not much. Did you have a good walk, mate? Hey, did you have a good walk? Hmm? Waking your tail. Happy to see me. Like you haven't seen me for a whole bloody week or something. It's only been an hour. Well, Pace is hanging around for the odd sheep nut. What you doing, Bigsy? Hey? Hey, Poe? What you doing, eh? Feed time for the dogs. I have to break these off because the net is lifted so high they've lifted off the ground and the birds can get in there until we get this finished I'm gonna take those and you can actually eat these they're good my next soup will have these stalks in my neck lovely jovely that's more like it get the bloody sparrows out they're like flying rats posse on for the dogs they're all waiting patiently and Damo's got them down to command those ducks know what time it is don't they what we're going to do is we're going to give uh, Bixie his a bit later on. Oh, Bixie's looking around for where his tucker is. <laughs> what happened, Bixie? Did you miss out that time, mate? I think it was patron Steve that suggested we feed him separate because he'd been choking on his tucker. So we're going to try that. Just over here, Bud, so he's on the ground. Please come. Please stay. Stay, Bud. Eat up. He watched your body language before you said eat up, yeah. didn't he? He went for it. Yeah. See? Doing a good job. Yeah. He's still wolfing it down anyway, he's far away from the dogs. Good boy, Pixie. He's too fast, eh? I reckon from now on we've got to start doing him in real tiny bits. Yeah, I think we have to do it in smaller bits because one day he's going to have an accident and choke on a dog. can die on a dog roll if they eat it too fast, eh? Yeah. It's happened quite a bit, more than you'd like to know. See how he's wolfing that down? Yeah. So from now on we'll do wee tiny squares and stick it in a bowl. That's his new feeding regime. So when he's in his box, no matter how fast he wolfs it down, he still can't choke on it. Yeah. Hey guys, thank you for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it been a big day it's not finished yet we've got some cleanup to do with tools and make some grub thanks for watching subscribe to the channel if you're not and uh, consider joining my patreon if you're not either and be good or at least try and be good if you can't be good be careful see you soon thanks Damo yeah actually need some more water bud thank you right, we're gonna cook up some grub not sure what we're gonna have for dinner tonight choices.